We've been making some pretty baller gaming PCs on the channel lately, so I thought it was time to challenge myself with a super budget $200 gaming PC, and I tried, but it's still baller. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you what's all inside my new $200 used gaming PC build guide and why I chose all these parts specifically. And then of course, we're gonna benchmark it. But before that though, the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options. I'd recommend PayPal and within a minute or so you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter, choose change product key, paste in your new key and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs. Check out my purchased order history here. So grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. So just as another disclaimer, all of the parts that we're talking about today are linked down in the description. And I also live stream every single one of these PC builds over on twitch.tv slash Zach's on Tuesday. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Starting with the top of the parts list, we have the CPU, and this here is an i5-3470, which I actually locally picked up itself for just 15 bucks, which is a pretty good deal, but you can certainly find these online for around the same price range pretty easily. The 3470 is a four core and four threaded processor with a base frequency of 3.2 gigahertz and a max turbo of 3.6 gigahertz right out of the box. To go along with the CPU, we have the motherboard, and this is probably the best deal of this entire build, the Zotac A55 ITX, which costs me only $20 used off eBay. I was super excited to find this deal. I wasn't even looking for an ITX board specifically, but for $20, it was really hard to pass up. During the live stream of this build, which by the way, was an absolute crazy night. You guys know what I'm talking about for those of you that were there. I actually found a posting of this exact same motherboard for that same $20 price. So I don't think this is really that hard to get. Now I definitely need to emphasize that this motherboard was not fun to play with though. There are connectors and headers randomly scattered throughout the board, which make cable management an absolute pain as you can see here, but for $35, this is a pretty nasty CPU motherboard combo deal. The next part up was the RAM, and this is a two by four gigabyte DDR3 kit from Crucial clocked at 1600 megahertz, which is perfect for a budget system like this, and I ended up paying $25 for it. This was kind of painful getting this RAM though. I was originally sent a stick that was broken in half, but I ended up getting a full refund for it, and then found this other deal on eBay, which wasn't too terrible. After that, we have the GPU, and this is the RX 560 four gigabyte model, which I picked up locally for only 50 bucks, but we all know that the GPU market is going completely crazy right now, so you might find this for possibly even cheaper here in the near future. I can't really complain about this costing $50 though. The RX 560 can certainly handle AAA titles in 1080p and low to medium just fine, and I've made an absolute ton of gaming benchmarking videos featuring this card in the past. Next up we have the SSD, and this is the only part that I actually bought brand new. This is the super budget 120 gigabyte Kingston model, and I actually scooped this up on an Amazon sale for 17 bucks. This isn't rocking DRAM, and there's certainly better options out there, but at this low of a price point, it's perfectly fine for a $200 system. For some more storage, I also paired that with a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. This I found locally for $15, and this is about an average price for a used one terabyte drive for local pickups. This isn't as great as the two terabyte drives that we were all paying $20 for, like I mentioned in my last build guide video, but for this one, this will work perfectly fine for us. Next up, we have the power supply, and this was actually another local deal. This is the EVGA 430 watt white certified unit. Definitely be sure to check check out EVGA V-Stock if you want to find an even better option for around the same price that I paid for this one of $20. I also had to throw on this super cheap Thermaltake CPU cooler because my CPU didn't come with one. Make sure you understand if yours comes with one or not. And for our last core component, we have the case, and this is the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, which I actually picked up on an Amazon sale as well for $44. And despite being super budget, this actually makes our $200 system look pretty nice if you ask me. This is a micro ATX case, so our ITX motherboard 
board looks a little tiny, but not too bad. This is also an acrylic side panel, which scratches just by looking at it the wrong way, but there is room for three fans, which I definitely took advantage of. These are our only aesthetic only and optional parts for the day. Once again, this is a three pack of the up here RGB fans, which you can find for around $20 brand new off Amazon. And I'm always recommending these in my build guides. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like. As you can see, everything minus the optional parts comes out to just above 200 US dollars. And I'm not going to lie, I get pretty excited about how much price to performance we're about to get for this used gaming PC. Now, before you guys start smashing that keyboard, yes, you certainly could also go with a Dell Optiplex or something like that and then just upgrade the GPU. You guys know I'm definitely a big fan of doing that. But for the sake of YouTube and for the sake of me not making the same build guide over and over again, I had to mix things up a little bit with this. To be honest, I'm not going to list out the alternative parts like I normally do because the only type of recommendations I would have are for higher quality and higher performing parts, which would only end up costing you more money. Since I know a lot of you have a super strict budget, I don't think that would be too valuable. And since we got some incredible deals here, I'm just going to leave this build as is and jump straight into the benchmarks today. The first game up was Fortnite. Please stop thinking you're a genius by saying that I've been owning all these bots down in the comment section. Every single person I kill in this game is an esports pro due to the skill based matchmaking, I promise. But here with the $200 PC in 1080p and pro settings, I got 115 FPS. Okay, we got whatever. I don't know what these things are. I'm just going to kill them. Okay. Oh, look, we have a weapon. What is this dude doing? What are these things? Why are there so many bots now? Oh, this is a real person. Oh, boy. That's a real person. <sighs> what is this thing? Is this another one of these stupid bots? Why are these everywhere? Now this thing's after me. This is so stupid. Am I playing against bots or real people? And they suck too. They're not even good. There they are. There he is. Got him. Finally. That kill took forever. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege and using the built-in benchmarking tool, even though you're seeing some lone wolf gameplay here in 1080p and medium settings, I got 125 FPS. After that was CSGO. Here you may also think that I'm playing against a few bots here and there, but I promise these are just esports pros with the name bot in their display names and in 1080p and pro settings, I got 159 FPS. So we did determine that it's pronounced AWP, right? Well, if that's how you say it, then AWP that. And this person, you can AWP that as well. And you AWP that. And you AWP that. I'm beginning to feel like an AWP god. AWP god. To sit down. Somebody told me that I should stop telling people to sit down, but it's just way too fun. Sit down. Hello. Sit down. You sit down too. And what is this person doing? Headshot practice. Boom. First try. Hello. Don't come down this way, man. Dude, I'm telling you. Don't come down this way, please. Why is this guy called Hack not doing anything? I'll save you. I think it's time for a multi-kill. There's one. Can we get another one? I think there's someone. Right, there we go. That doesn't really count. Can we get a real multi-kill? There's one. Can we get another one? There's one. Oh, I missed them. I missed them. I got this. I got this. Sit down. I'm beginning to feel like an up god, up god. Getting into the tougher to run games, Far Cry New Dawn followed, and in 1080p and low settings, I got 48 FPS. But looking at this 1% low, you can tell that this was still pretty smooth and definitely an enjoyable playing experience that's good enough to not have to drop it down to 720p, in my opinion. After that was Borderlands 3, and in 1080p and medium settings, I actually cranked out almost up to that 60 FPS mark with 56. Gears 5 followed, and in 1080p, I decided to drop the settings to low, and here I got 72 FPS, definitely above our 60 mark for this one, one, which is just awesome to see in a $200 gaming PC. Valorant followed up after that. Not sure why this is in the tougher to run game section, to be honest, but either way, in 1080p and medium settings, I got 131 frames per second. Enjoy a couple of headshots here on the house free of charge. All right, so welcome to this week's episode of Sniping with ZTT. Hello? Sit down. Another one? Yep, you sit down too. I think there might be one more back here, though. Coming in. Coming in hot. Sit down. Where did this person go? Oh, there they are. And now they're dead. Should be right back here. There they are. Another one? You sit down, too. I think there's one here at A. Who's just waiting for me? I'll just wait right here. There should be two. There's one. 
The other one should be right there. Oh, there they are. Oh, that was a headshot, too. Headshot! Can we get two? Headshot! Following that was the Division 2. Kind of forgot to include this in some of my previous benchmarking builds. And in 1080p and low settings using the built-in benchmarking tool, I got a somewhat low but still very playable 49 FPS. And finally, our last gaming benchmark of the day was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Let me know what you guys are thinking about the new Cold War game coming out in a couple of months. And here in 1080p and low settings, I got 62 FPS. I'm a little bit wore out from Fortnite, so let's just try and get a couple double kills here in Call of Duty and call it a day. What do you say? I just got to gain my confidence back, you know, get a couple kills like that and we'll be good to go see there's one that's all i need man just get a cup get a couple more that's it i'm feeling another one yep there it is see now i'm feeling good oh yeah that feels good that feels good too what was that sit down sir i'm just not playing that well today i mean better than that guy but the real question is if i'm better than okay definitely better than that guy Definitely better than that guy, too. Oh, I might be better than everybody. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, feeling good now. And just like always, I threw in a 3D Mark Times by benchmark for the consistency across anyone's build guides, and this system was able to crank out 2,053. If you guys are interested in seeing more gaming PC build videos just like this one, be sure to headshot that subscribe button and notification bell down below, and also head on over to the ZTT Discord where I personally live every single day. We post a ton of build guides from both me and the community, and even ZTT deals to help save you some money. Be sure to let me know in the comment section what you thought of this build, what you would personally do to change it, and finally, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.